Well, uh, good afternoon, uh, Coasters. Now, this is the fourth and, and final part of the video series I've done explaining how the assumptions I've made and our team have made in putting together a plan for Westland and the West Coast uh, for economic recovery have been made. It's important to test the assumptions. And of course, it's very important for your plan to be able to be shifted when an assumption is proven to be incorrect or the market conditions change via monetary stimulus or something similar, you've got to be able to adjust and then the new plan becomes, or the amended plan becomes the new plan. So last time we talked about the dot-com bubble and this time I want to talk about the global financial crisis of 2008. It was caused by the collapse of the subprime mortgage market uh, in the USA. Subprime mortgages is, was where second level funders would bundle three or four thousand home mortgages together into a package, take a margin on it, make a profit on it, sell it to someone else, they'd sell it, they'd sell it, everyone's making a dollar on it, and then one day there were no buyers and the emperor had no clothes. And that was the end of that. The collapse uh, collapsed many major funding institutions, worldwide names in the USA. It was very severe and uh, it, it impacted on trading in New Zealand. We, we didn't have a lot of second level collapses there, but the impact from a trading point of view hit our country very badly and it ground things to a halt. Once again, the repercussions continued for over eight years before the issues that arose had been resolved by the courts because often that's where they all end up and the rebuilding of the New Zealand economy had continued. Now here we are, we're in 2020. It's not a bad place to be on a day like this, on a day like today at the coast, I can't imagine anywhere better. I've got to tell you, the current market decline has been greater than 1929 1987, 2002, and 2008. So COVID-19 was the trigger, and it arrived at a time when many commentators believed that the equity markets were overdue for a significant correction. As I've said, in any event, we need to consider past events as a guide to future events. So it's my opinion that we need to consider that it will be reasonable to assume a recovery will take between 8 and 10 years. I don't think it's unreasonable. I think it's reasonable to assume. Some commentators are talking about being back to normal within two years. But to me, this would require this event to be of a lesser scale uh, than the previous collapses. And at this stage, that's certainly not the case. At this, uh, at this time, the evidence shows the impacts are in fact much greater than previous events. This event uh, has always been a market collapse triggered by COVID-19. And that will be, some, it'll be something that will become very clear as time goes on. When we get our plan to a point where we can share it, we're going to look at the at focusing on coast employment in the areas where the coast has a significant advantage. Now I can tell you on my desk at the present time, uh, six or seven proposals, all have merit, all create industry, all are very exciting. Will they come to fruition? Don't know. But I'll tell you what, I'll be doing my bit. There are a number of other exciting avenues and prospects. Water. Water the next gold. I mean, really? We still don't export it? Perhaps the time's come. White bait. I'd like to see the white bait season extended for the next two years by two weeks at the beginning and two weeks at the end. Just as a further little boost to the coast economic recovery. Gold. Let's open up that stewardship land. 
Let's, let's let the miners help us rebuild New Zealand. Coal. You've got coal mines out there that can start tomorrow. They just need access agreements with DOC. Let's get it done. Possums, tar, deer, all in many ways uh, wandering around the, the hills of the coast. Uh, perhaps it's time to slow down on dumping 1080 everywhere and create some jobs out of these assets or resources. Fish, fishing's going well. Westport, Greymouth, going very well. Timber processing and uh, planting. We've got vast areas of the coast that could be planted for timber. Let's make sure we talk about it with Shane Jones. Michael Keenan keeps talking about medical marijuana. If it becomes legal, I think he's on to an absolute winner. Horticulture. You know, we, Karamea, Harry Harry. We've got some, we've got some horticultural outlets that are world leaders. Retirement options. I mean, now more than ever, the coast has got to be a place worth considering for retirement. Domestic tourism. Hey, it's, a, it's something that we need to work on. Lots and lots of coasters haven't been home for years. Perhaps the time's come. International tourism. That'll come back. Don't know when, but it'll be back. Our glaciers are a major attraction. A couple of things missing at the moment. One's a gondola up Franz Joseph. What a game changer that would be. What about rebuilding the road into Fox Glacier itself? I mean, it's a no-brainer. And the list goes on, for page after page after page. So Coasters, there's no shortage of opportunity. And for me, that's very exciting. <clears throat> now we have a 10-year time frame. It's about planning from the bottom to where the bottom is, maybe late 2021, moving across and a steady rise back to 2030. We've got to have a plan that also has plan B, C and D. So when assumptions change or are proven to be incorrect, we can modify the plan and move forward again because that's actually how it works. In any event, uh, Coasters, I can't think of a better place in New Zealand or to the limited number of places that I've visited in the world where I'd rather be at the present time. And we'll catch you later.